back to my channel and I'm so happy to have you here right now um, today because a few days ago an amazing thing happened and finally I have time to um, do a video about it if you watch my old videos, or if you are an old subscriber, you know that my first video on this channel is about Little Miss Nobody case, and um, a few days ago she has been identified as Sharon Lee Gallagher's the girl which I talked about on this little miss nobody video so i'm so happy and i can't express what i feel right now um if you are new or if you want a better quality video about little miss nobody because you know um, little miss nobody was my first video and it was so bad like the editing the sound everything everything was so bad so, right now, I'm here and let's open the file and talk about Little Miss Nobody and then let's talk about our amazing Sharon Lee Gallagher's. So, let's start. Okay, I used to start my videos as Hello Boys and Girls. It's Miss Doe. If you're watching this, then I'm already that. Oops, wrong line. But some of you were offended because of that line. But I was just, you know, I'm an actor and I've played in several plays. And in one of them, I was just saying this line. And my friends and I thought that that would be cute to um, say this line. But then people were like, oh, you're making fun of the people on your channel. Dude. Then why do I have this channel? If I'm going to make fun of them, then why would I have a remembering channel? It's just so weird. And then I was, you know, keep going as if you're watching this and someone is already there and we're here to remember his or her name. Actually, we're here to remember their stories. And then I said today's case is about a little girl named Little Miss Nobody also known as Jane Yavipai though but from now on we don't have to call her as Little Miss Nobody or Jane Yavipai though because she has her name back her name is Sharon Sharon Lee Gallagher it's, I'm so happy oh my god and then I said the case happened in 1960 and it's still unsolved but it is kind of salt. Yes, we don't know the killers of Sharon right yet, but I, I'm sure that we're gonna learn what happened to that little girl because we know her name, we know her identity, and I, I have hope. Please, you should have hope too. And come on, let's begin. Well, on the 31st of July, 1960, a school teacher, Russell Allen, was searching for rocks with his family near Congress in Yavapai County, Arizona. Russell was just off Elmo Road, about 1.5 miles from Highway 93, 93, when he stumbled upon a partially buried body in the creek bed of a sand wash. The body was that of a female had been dead for one to two weeks. Her body was charred. She was wearing a checkered blouse with white or pink shorts and her fingernails and toenails were painted bright red. Near her body was a pair of adult-sized flip-flops fastened with leather straps that had been cut down to fit her feet. There was also a rusty pocket knife next to her that seemed blood-stained. It is unknown if we it is unknown if it was related to the girl. Evidently, the person or people that had dumped the girl, I was just, I was just, you know, in the mood to talk 
and I was just in the mood to t talk about this case, but my storage room is full again, so I need to clear up some space, and then I'll keep telling you about our cutie pie. <laughs> so don't go anywhere. Stay there. I'm back. I'm back. So let's keep going. Evidently, the person or people that had dumped the girl's body had tried to dig two other graves near where her she... Where? Huh? Near where she was ultimately placed. The girl was between the ages of two and seven. Most recent examinations have pointed to the likelihood she was between three and six. The young girl had brown hair that may have been tinted or dyed auburn. She was about three feet six inches and 55 pounds. At the time, she was classified as being white, but most recently this has been changed to undetermined. The child had a perfect set of baby teeth and had never suffered any bone fractures. The coroner was not able to determine because of that, because the body was too decomposed. Nevertheless, the case is classified as a suspected homicide. Authorities tried to find the girl's family or anyone who could identify her. They questioned several suspects of crimes involving children and examined missing child reports. They also traced migrant families. Dozens of people sent telegrams, letters, and called asking for information on the body. Sadly, she became known as Little Miss Nobody after no one came forward to identify her. Over the years, she has been linked to various missing children. One of the most prominent speculations is that she is Sharon Lee Gallagher. <sighs> Four years Four-year-old Sharon was abducted on the July the 21st, 1960, from an alley behind her home by a man and a woman. It is believed they had been stalking her for a few days. However, authorities believe Little Miss Nobody was older than Sharon. Furthermore, a couple of reports say the girl's footprints were compared and did not match. Well, you were wrong. You were wrong. Okay, it was the year 1960, so um, they didn't have enough technology to solve this case. So, okay, okay, I'm not angry at all. Okay, I'm not. I'm not angry. Despite being known as Little Miss Nobody, Yavapai County's residents came together to give the young girl a proper funeral and burial. Dave Paladin. A local radio announcer started a campaign to raise funds because he couldn't stand to see the little girl buried in a boot hill. <sighs> a service was conducted by Dr. Charles Franklin Parker. A few of his words during the ceremony attended by over 70 people. Here is a little wanderer who has been in our midst. We don't know her name. We can only guess her age. It occurs to me we may not know. But God knows, there are no unknowns, no orphans in God's world. We may never know the whys and wherefores, but somewhere, someone is going to be watching the paper to learn what happened to a little girl left on the desert. Desert or desert? I can't remember how to pronounce this one. If there has been a mistake, probably a discredited conscience. Conscience will go on and on. The girl was buried in a pale blue casket and her memory card was read, God's little child, date of birth, unknown, date of death, unknown. An anonymous mourner also left a note, forgive us child for the weakness of man and in turn, when in your final home, pray for us. In 2018, the NCMEC funded the exhumation of the unidentified girl's remains. 
The University of North Texas Center for Human Identification generated the DNA profile and it was entered into the national database. An image of what the girl may have looked like while a lab was also created. Little Miss Nobody remains unidentified after six years. But she's identified! Okay, and then I said thank you for what I hate my phone and I'm still begging you to buy me a new one. <laughs> and I said thank you for watching, thank you for remembering this little girl with me. If you like to play your video, please like and subscribe. If I told something wrong about the case, you may correct me by writing a command to like love stars till then. But I don't ask for likes or I don't ask for you to subscribe to my channel anymore. So this was the story of Little Miss Nobody. But now it's time for the story of Sharon Lee Gallagher's. Okay, I have the New York Times opened here. I'm gonna use it as a source. So, okay. Uh, I've talked about this. Okay, so. After more than half a century, she has her name back, she was Sharon Lee Gallagher's, and she died when she was four years old. It says, and... Okay, I, I, I want to talk about Sharon's story. I know about this story, but I don't want to give any wrong details, and I never trust myself, and I have anxiety, and so on, and... That's why I use my computer all the time. But just know that at first, when I was not showing my face, I used to memorize all the things I have written. And But now, even if I memorize them, I just feel like looking at my computer because, like I said, I have anxiety and I don't trust myself at all. So, yeah. Okay. So, the unidentified little girl who won the hearts of Yavapai County in 1960 and who occupied the months and the time of YCSO and partners for 62 years will now rightfully be given her name back and will no longer need to be referred to as Little Miss Nobody. The sheriff's office said on Facebook this week. The authorities said Sharon had been playing with other children in the backyard of her grandmother's house in Alamogordo when she was abducted by a woman and other unidentified people in a sedan. Investigators over the years had used old newspaper clippings to try to discern whether the missing child in New Mexico was connected to the remains discovered in Arizona. On the August of, on the 8th, of August 1960, the Arizona Republic reported there was, some, there was some speculation that the girl found in the desert and the missing Sharon Lee, Sharon Lee Gallagher's were the same person, but the age of the Arizona child had been estimated to be older than four. They eventually dismissed the possibility that Sharon Lee Gallagher's was a child whose remains were discovered in Arizona because too many elements in the two cases clothing, dates, footprint compressions did not match up, investigators said, but, you know, um, like I said before, it was 1960, so probably they didn't have the necessary equipment to, um, you know, compare the footprints or, you know, dates and age, because, I, I don't know, but I feel like you understand me, so. Arizona child was labeled an unidentified female child in a coroner's report from 1960 and Jane Yavipai Doe on missing child passers. But with the de development of DNA technology, the investigators said they were finally able to match the identity of Little Miss Nobody to the New Mexico case. Now that the remains have been identified, Sharon's relatives have been informed, the authorities said. A nephew, Ray Chase, said at the news conference that he had grown up hearing about his mother's missing sister, who he said had been described as feisty. It was very comforting to know people were still looking, he added. It is still sinking in. 
No suspect, suspects in her killing have been announced yet. This tragic mystery had shocked Prescott, a city in West Central Arizona, with a population of about 45,000. Records and newspaper reports at the time said that on the 31st of July, 1960, a teacher hiking in a remote area outside Congress, Arizona, saw the partly buried body. Really sorry about that. So let's let's read the paragraph again from the beginning. Records and newspaper reports at the time said that on the 31st of July, 1960, a teacher hiking in a remote area outside Congress, Arizona, saw the partly buried body of a child in a sandy creek bed. Investigators believe that she had been dead for at least a week. And we know that this teacher's name is Russell Allen, so we know more details. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm a weird girl. I, I don't know why I'm acting like this. I'm just so excited and I wanna scream. I wanna laugh out loud and I wanna dance, I wanna jump. I, I wanna do lots of things right now. And I, I'm, I'm just a weirdo from the personality. I've always been like this and probably I will be like this till the death, so. Never mind. Never mind. In mid August 1960, the child was given a funeral using funds raised by residents of Prescott, according to an Associated Press report covering the event. During the ceremony, Dave Paladin, a local radio host, and his wife stood in for her parents. Somewhere, someone is watching to learn what happened to a little girl left on the desert. Charles Franklin Parker, the, the minister of the city's first congregational church told the 70 people gathered to mourn the girl no one knew if there has been a misdeed probably a discreet conscience or conscience will go on and on the ap quoted him as saying at the service the small child sized coffin was affixed with a card that read god's little child date of birth unknown date of death unknown she was buried in mountain view cemetery in prescott her tombstone engraved with little miss nobody the FBI broadcast her description nationwide, according to a report in the Arizona Republic in August 1960. The agency said a man's footprints were found nearby, next to footprints believed to be the girls. Tire tracks in the area suggested someone had driven off the road and turned around in the sand wash, sand wash it said. The case, determined to be a homicide, went to court, the authorities said. It is unclear how the girl was killed, but I feel like I don't know, but I hope her killers are still alive so we can learn what happened and we can give them the punishment they deserve. In 2014, investigators working with the authorities in Colorado on an unrelated cold case came across the file of Little Miss Nobody. Her remains were exhumed in 2018 for DNA analysis and the sheriff's office in January held a fundraising drive to support the project, working with Ofram, a private laboratory in Texas that assists law enforcement on DNA cases, the local news media reported. And that's all written here. And I'm so happy that Little Miss Nobody has her name back and I'm so have to be able to sit here and talk about Little Miss Nobody, also known as Sharon Lee Gallagos from now on. And I hope this video is not boring for you because I had a lot of fun while shooting this one. And um, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it for now. Oh, and by the way, probably it will take a few weeks for me to prepare new videos because I will have a lot of exams in the next few weeks so probably i won't be able to shoot anything i won't be able to do anything not about you know shooting videos or stuff so um please be patient with me i love you all so much and have a life full of stars till then